next thing to talk about when we're looking at Vancouver here is the SkyTrain network. So this is our light rail transportation system and it is set up beautifully. So there's three lines here and it connects the whole, really the whole greater Vancouver area. So you've got three different lines here. We've got the Canada line, which connects YVR. So this is our international airport here, which is actually in the city of Richmond. And you can take that up. It goes all the way downtown. So there's a station here in uh, Yale town, which you can, which is about a 25 minute SkyTrain ride from the airport all the way up to Yale town. Then you've got this second line, which is the Expo line starting at Waterfront Station here. And then it's this dark blue one. It goes all the way through uh, East Vancouver, Southwest here into the city of New Westminster uh, to Lougheed Center, which is in Coquitlam. And then it goes south into uh, the city of Surrey. And then this one actually in the next handful of years is going to be extending even further out East into the city of Langley. And then you've got the Millennium Line, which starts at the terminal station here, and it goes east all the way through Burnaby here, and through an area called Burquitlam, which is this little segment right here, halfway between Coquitlam and Burnaby, hence appropriately named Burquitlam. <laughs> And then it goes to Coquitlam Center in Coquitlam there. The nice thing about the Millennium Line is in the next couple years here, it's actually going to be extending out west this way out to UBC. And that's that whole Broadway project. Okay, then to the south of Vancouver, we've got the city of Richmond, which is home of the International Airport here. Richmond. We are looking at a uh, benchmark sale price for a single family in the low two millions there. Uh, apartment style condo, looking at a benchmark sale price of about 750 there. Richmond is very popular with the Asian community. There are tons of phenomenal, all sorts of Asian restaurants. It's one of my favorite things to do when I'm in Richmond. Uh, any time of day, I find there's, there's a lot of 24 hour faux or Timson places there as well. And then to the south of Richmond, and to the south here, we've got the city of Delta, as well as this area called Tawasin. So that's how it's pronounced, Tawasin. <laughs> and it is home of the ferry terminal. So if you want to take a ferry, there is a huge terminal in Tawasin, and you can take that ferry over to the islands here, can take it over to Nanaimo or you can even take it all the way down to Victoria there. Okay so traveling further east of Delta is we've got this community called White Rock. I love White Rock. It's basically California of the north. You've got this amazing beach community vibes fish and chips, there's a pier with all these really eclectic beach stores and restaurants. And then you've got the iconic White Rock Pier here, which this was a drizzly day when they took the picture here, but it extends out again, because we are on the West Coast here, another amazing spot for sunsets. Look at this, you've got the iconic White Rock of White Rock. <laughs> It's a really awesome spot because you've got everything down at water level, but then all of these streets are really built up into the hillside. So you have these incredible, incredible views when you're standing here. So you're definitely going to get your workout done. You can see the incline there, but you've got this gorgeous view. So that's all ocean right there. Okay, then we're going to move to the city of Surrey, which takes up a large footprint. Basically, Surrey is this entire area here. So benchmark sale price for a single family in Surrey is going to be about $1.65 million. You can find some affordable apartment style condos. Benchmark sale price is about $540 there. So there's definitely some opportunity. You've got the SFU campus there. There's a future UBC campus there. It's really popular for students. 
Okay, and we're gonna move east again to the city of Langley, another great city that is growing in popularity with families, there's some great schools, and if you like the larger properties, you want a little bit more space, uh, a little bit larger of a yard, or potentially even an acreage style property, you might be really attracted to Langley. Especially kind of in this area here, you're gonna find some acreage style properties if you want some horses. There's a really cool llama farm out that way, but some acreage style properties if you're used to that kind of farm life or just having a larger backyard, Langley might be a really popular area that you'd be attracted to. Langley is very similar to Surrey. Uh, we're looking at a benchmark sale price uh, for a single family home uh, in that 1.6 million range. For a, for a townhouse style home, we're looking in the high 800s and then for an apartment style condo, uh, just over 600,000 for benchmark sale price. Next one is Maple Ridge here. So if you like the smaller community vibes, you like knowing your neighbors, running into them at the grocery store, um, and you really like the outdoor life, Maple Ridge might be a really attractive area for you because it is a smaller community, but as you will see here, you border on all of these lots of mountain trails here. So if you you know enjoy being able to go out for a trail run on a regular basis or just be in the mountains, head up to Alouette Lake, which is absolutely gorgeous, Maple Ridge might be a really attractive area for you. Maple Ridge is going to be a little bit more affordable than Surrey Langley. A benchmark sale price for a single family home is going to be about just under 1.3 million. For a townhouse, we're looking at just under 800,000. And for an apartment style condo, we're sitting at about 540,000. Okay, we're gonna move west into the, this is called the Tri-Cities area here. So this is your city of Coquitlam, Port Coquitlam, and Port Moody here. So it's a large area there, basically divided up into those three. They are their own cities, um, but they're collectively known as the Tri-Cities area there. As far as benchmark sale price, Port Coquitlam is going to be your most affordable option for a single family there. We're looking at about 1.4 million. Coquitlam, we're sitting at about 1.8 million, and then Port Moody, we're sitting just over 2 million for benchmark sale price for a single family. And then we don't want to forget New Westminster. So this is a community just on the southeast of Burnaby here. It borders the Fraser River, and it's nice. There's the Sky train that goes right through New West. So if you're looking at getting easily connected to other areas in the greater Vancouver area, it would, might be a really great attraction there. Um, benchmark sale price for a single family in New West is going to be about 1.5 million. And then we're going to head a little bit north. So we're going to cross the Iron Workers Bridge here into the city and district of North Vancouver. So North Vancouver, it's a city and a district. Basically, the city is kind of this area here, and then you've got this whole entire area, which is the district of North Vancouver. So benchmark sale price for a single family in North Vancouver is gonna be about 2.2 million. Townhouse, 1.3 million. And then apartment style condo is gonna be just over 800,000. I love North Vancouver. One of the major attractors for a lot of people that live here is the proximity to the mountains. There's so many great areas. If you love the outdoor lifestyle, which is the main reason I moved here is because I was just born to live in the outdoors and do all of the different activities. And that is a huge highlight of being able to live in North Vancouver. One of my favorite things to do is head over to Deep Cove, which is this little uh, community over here on the east side. And as you can see, you've got this gorgeous cove here. I love going in the summer in the morning. You get the sunrise, it's super calm. Lots of times you'll see all the seals. They kind of hang out around like the piers over here. But then you can also, you can park up here and do this quarry rock hike, which takes you to a really cool viewpoint. So this is looking directly south. So you're looking directly, you're looking directly this way. So you can see some absolutely incredible views. But as you can see, there's so many mountain trails, so many 
up through here. And then on the North Shore, you've got three Mount Morris parts. You've got Cyprus, you've got Grouse, and then you've got Seymour. I always remember them, they're in alphabetical order. So looking north, looking straight at them, Cypress, Grouse, Seymour, they're in alphabetical order. And the cool thing is, in the nighttime, they're all lit up and you can actually see them from the city. But in the summertime, you can go up there, you can hike. Up at Grouse, uh, Mount Fromm, there's mountain bike trails there. Uh, so much cool stuff, direct access to, especially if you live in this North Vancouver area. Um, you know, you're, you might be 5, 10, 15 minute drive. Uh, I'm in downtown and without any traffic, it takes me 20 minutes to get to the North Shore, which is super nice. Okay, we're gonna head west to West Vancouver here. So West Vancouver is this whole area, really right up there. And this is definitely an attractive area to be in. You've got all these gorgeous homes that line the whole coast there with some incredible waterfront views, waterfront properties. You get the West Coast sunset. They're, um, they're pretty desirable. Benchmark sale price for a single family in West Van, you're looking at the low three millions. And for apartment style condos, you're looking at about 1.3 million. Some of my favorite things to do in West Vancouver is paddle boarding. There's some really cool spots. You can go off this lighthouse park. You can also go to Whitecliff Park, which is over here. So you parked here and you can paddle board all the way around all the coast here. And it's one of my favorite things to do because you get to see all of the gorgeous waterfront homes and it's just a different vantage point looking at them from the water. Because oftentimes you see those homes and if you look at them from uh, their driveway, they're not really that impressive. But then looking at them from the water, it's a really cool way to look at some real estate. Okay, and then the second ferry terminal in the Greater Vancouver area is Horseshoe Bay. So that is right here. And you've got quick ferry straight over to Bowen Island here. You've got a ferry that goes all the way over to Vancouver Island to Nanaimo. And then you've got the ferry that goes over to Langdale, which is the Sunshine Coast, which is another favorite area of mine. It's the complete contrast of downtown Vancouver. It's a very quiet ocean town. There's some really gorgeous properties out there. A little bit slower moving pace. Um, some great restaurants and you even have the option if you don't want to take the ferry which can sometimes be a little bit of a journey especially if you don't have a reservation and you have to wait in line you do have the option to take Harbor Air which is a flow plane so you have the flow planes that leave from here just outside of Coal Harbor and you can take this flow plane all the way to seashells and it, they land just in there. And on a gorgeous day, highly, highly recommend doing it. Again, another vantage point just to see some incredible terrain of the West Coast. But if you are looking for a second property or you're able to work remotely and maybe want something a little bit more affordable, the Sunshine Coast might be a really great option. The benchmark sale price for a single family there is just over 900,000. And then apartment style condos, you're looking at just under 600,000. And it is nice because you're, it's a 40 minute ferry ride. So if you time it right, depending on where you need to go and when, it might not be that bad of a commute. I know, I've, I know numerous people who do that commute. Okay, we're gonna continue to head up Highway 99. So first main point of interest is Squamish. So this is a really gorgeous mountain town. Again, I know people that live up in Squamish uh, and they, they commute down to Vancouver on a, a somewhat regular basis, but you're going to find all your amenities in Squamish. Uh, one of the features of Squamish is the hike called the Chief, which is a really iconic hike. It's not super challenging and it's not super long either, but you get these incredible unreal views. So this is a view from the top. You can see it pretty gorgeous. You get a view of all of the, the gorgeous water. It's kind of like nature's staircase. <laughs> this is the classic view here. So this is the town of Squamish down here. This is looking south. 
into Howe Sound. And then we can further head up Highway 99 and the next stop is Whistler, which is the iconic mountain resort and I definitely need to head there. It is an experience. Uh, one of my favorite times to be there is in the winter time close to Christmas because it is your classic Christmas town, especially when the snow is coming down and there's Christmas lights, Christmas trees everywhere, and you can stay right at that village and it's a very cool environment. You can stay and you've got the village there, you've got the access to the gondolas and the, and the, uh, and the lifts, you come down, everybody meets and gathers in that same spot. There's pubs, there's restaurants, there's bars, and it's a really fun environment there. Always stuff going on, even if you're not a skier, there's a spa there, there's tons of stuff still to do. And then in the summertime, if you love downhill mountain biking, you need to check Whistler out. And there are some incredible hikes all along here, up in Whistler, up in Pemberton, which is even a little bit further north of Whistler. Lots of great hikes down in the Squamish area and even closer to the North Shore, closer to Vancouver, depending what you want, whether that's, you know, day hikes, challenging, not very challenging, multi-day hikes, so many really great options there. So that concludes our tour of all of the Vancouver's and all of the areas within the greater Vancouver area. So if you are planning on making the move here, I hope this video helped you understand the terminology, what you're actually looking at, a really high level overview of all of the areas. In further videos, if you are looking at a specific area, I dive into further neighborhoods, further cities, into more detail in future videos. And if you have a request of a future city that you would love me to dive further into, please put it in the comments. My name is Megan Becker with eXp Realty. If you are looking at making a move here, please reach out. I would love the opportunity to help you make a smooth move to Canada's greatest city. All my contact info is in the description box below, so please reach out and I'm excited to chat. And until next time, I'm going to head downstairs and go to one of my favorite coffee shops and grab a matcha latte.